non-disjunction is the failure of chromatids to separate during meiosis. One type of non-disjunction occurs in meiosis one when you have a failure in the separation of the non-sister chromatids during meiosis one. So let's say I have a haploid number of two here, just for simplicity, and the non-sister chromatids are synapsed or are paired. Now, normally, what would happen is during meiosis one, either non-sister chromatid will segregate to the um, uh, to opposite sides to opposite poles. However, in non-disjunction, one of these uh, pairs of chromosomes fails to separate or segregate so that you end up with both the non-sister chromatids on the same side. And this results in um, one daughter cell having two non-sister chromatids and the other daughter cell not having any non-sister chromatids for that particular chromosome. Now, this usually will only happen for one chromosome and that's why in this example, the orange chromosomes are segregating normally. So unlike in a polyploidy, where all the chromosomes are affected, in this case, only one chromosome is affected. And this will give us a configuration of gametes in which they all get one of the orange chromosomes, but two gametes get two blue chromosomes and two gametes don't get um, any uh, uh, chromosomes. And therefore, the if this were 2n, the number of chromosomes in the gametes is n plus 1 instead of n um, or the haploid number and n minus 1 in the second pair of gametes resulting from the second daughter cell. This uh, failure to separate or non-disjunction can also occur in meiosis too. Um, so in this scenario, meiosis one would occur normally so that you would have correct separation of the non-sister chromatids and you will have a daughter cell, uh, both the daughter cells having one of each non-sister chromatids. But now sister chromatids will fail to separate in uh, meiosis two, so that you will end up with uh, two blue chromosomes. Um, uh, in, in one gamete, no blue chromosome in the other gamete. And this is a rare process, so it's unlikely for it to occur in both uh, daughter cells from meiosis 1 at the same time. Therefore, the other two gametes are expected to be normal and have the normal haploid number. So, if this were 2n, we have one gamete with n plus 1, one gamete with n minus one, and the other two gametes are going to have the normal haploid number of chromosomes, n. The zygotes that result from um, fertilization with aneuploid gametes are aneuploid, and therefore non-disjunction is a cause of, um, is the origin of aneuploids. For example, if we have an n minus one gamete that fertilizes an N gamete, this will result in a zygote which has two N minus one chromosomes. In other words, this would be a uh, monosomic zygote. Um, on the other hand, if you have 
an n plus 1 um, gamete fertilizing an n gamete then the resulting zygote will be 2n plus 1 will have one extra chromosome and would therefore be a trisomic. Aneuploidy is the cause of uh, many human genetic diseases. For instance, if a an n minus one sperm which lacks the y chromosome, so a sperm will either have the x chromosome or the y chromosome, but if due to non disjunction it doesn't have a y chromosome and it fertilizes a normal egg then the resulting individual has only an X chromosome. And this is written as XO to make it clear that it is not a typographical error. XO individuals have what is known as Turner's syndrome, which um, occurs in about one in thousand births. Another possibility is if an N plus 1 um, sperm having both an X and a Y chromosome. So if there is non-disjunction between the X and the Y and you get an N plus 1 sperm fertilizes a normal N um, uh, egg, the resulting uh, zygote is x x y since the egg will have the x chromosome this condition is known as Klinefelter syndrome and another well-known trisomic condition is down syndrome or trisomy 21 where non-disjunction uh, between uh, chromosome 21 causes uh, individuals to have three copies of chromosome 21. One important use of aneuploids um, and um, monosomics in uh, plant genetics is to map uh, mutants to chromosomes and what one does is create um, monosomic lines so the first uh, one here for example is monosomic for chromosome 1 so it's got two copies of every other chromosome but only one for chromosome 1 the second line is monosomic for chromosome 2 the third line is monosomic for chromosome 3, and so on. Now, let's say we have um, uh, discovered a mutant, and we want to map on uh, you know, its location to determine which chromosome it is on. And of course, uh, we wouldn't know what chromosome it is on, but to illustrate the process, let's assume that this mutant is on chromosome 3, and we will denote the wild type allele as A plus and the mutant allele as A. Now, um, if, if we had a pure breeding mutant, its genotype would be, um, you know, chromosome one over chromosome one, chromosome two over chromosome two, little a over little a, and so on. Now, let's consider two crosses. In the first cross, we um, are going to cross the uh, uh, the monosomic for chromosome one to our mutant and we don't really need to track all the chromosomes we can just track chromosome uh, one and chromosome three this cross will produce two types of progeny the first progeny would be chromosome 1 over nothing. So there will be a monosomic for chromosome 1 and 
they will be hat for a or the other type of progeny this will produce would be chromosome 1 over chromosome 1 so they will uh, be, be diploid for chromosome 1 and for a they will again be hets and as far as phenotypes go they will be all wild type assuming that um, uh, the mutant is uh, is recessive which is usually the case now let's consider the second cross in which we are crossing um, to the chromosome 3 monosomic and this cross would also produce um, two types of individuals they will all be diploid for chromosome 1 but the first set of individuals will be uh, uh, monosomic for chromosome 3 and so they will be um, A over nothing while the second set of individuals are going to be a plus over A and these individuals will have the wild type phenotype whereas the monosomic individuals will have the mutant phenotype since there isn't a dominant allele to suppress the recessive mutant phenotype therefore we will have a 1 is to 1 ratio of mutant is to wild type phenotype. So the process of mapping a mutant would be to cross it to each of the monosomic lines and whichever line gives you a 1 is to 1 mutant is to wild type ratio is um, uh, tells you what chromosome the mutant is on since it will be the chromosome for which that line is monosomic.